Good morning, everyone. Um, we will be beginning the service very, very uh, shortly, um, but I need to make the uh, announcement that uh, we were not able to secure uh, street parking specifically for the funeral today. So if you are parked on the street, you will need to feed the meters. Um, we do not want your spirit to be quenched at all by a $45 ticket. Uh, so if you are parked on, on the street, please make sure that your meter is current. And again, we will be joining you shortly for this celebration. I hope you didn't come expecting being a funeral this morning. That might be a shock to somebody. But this is going to be a celebration of a home going of an amazing soul. And there's going to be grief, there's going to be tears, but believers in Jesus know that this is just a transition from earth to glory. So prepare your hearts for what's to come. God bless you and God keep you. And again, we'll be with you very, very shortly.
Shall we all stand for the entrance of the family, please? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. O oh, spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night, they are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Feel free to keep playing, my brother. Have your way.
Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the calm waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Amen. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen simply means so be it. Let it be done. That we agree with the will of God today. We may not understand, we may not even approve, but when you know that God is God, you know that he makes no mistakes at all. So today we say amen. Not as a final farewell, but just as an agreement that God is in absolute and complete control. Can we just bless the Lord and thank God for this day? Come on, because this is the day. I know your hearts are heavy, but this is the day that the Lord has made. Sister Betty would want you celebrating today. Sister Betty would want you giving God glory today. That you would not mourn like those who have no hope. She's not here. She's left this earthly plane and she is with the Lord. And I'm determined today. That if I've got to worship God all by myself, and I know I'm not going to be by myself, I'm going to give him the glory that his name is due, for he alone is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We have an order of service, and we're going to proceed as it is printed on the program. I need to ask, first of all, as Pastor Nick, has he made it to the house today? Then if not, Pastor Kevin McDaniels will stand in his place for the opening prayer. Reading of the scripture again, Pastor McDaniels, the Old Testament, Psalm 27, New Testament, Pastor Ricky Scott. Musical selection, poem, more musical selections. I think there's going to be a lot of music today. I think we're going to have a lot of opportunities to give God some glory today. And you know what the Bible says? That The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. And it's interesting when, when you do a word study, there's, there's different words that talk about praise. i got something to say. I'm excited today, and I need to keep my spirit in check because I don't want to say something I should be saying in this moment. But the Bible says that, that, that God inhabits the praises. There's several words that, that show up as praise in the Bible. You know, and if you know the song, Barak, hallelujah, says, Yada, extend your hands, that's a way of praising God. Toda, lift up your hands. That's another way of praising God. Tehila means to sing. Kara means to dance. And But the Bible, when the Bible says that God, O thou God who inhabits the praises, the word that God chose to utilize is the tehila. That's the singing. That's the music. God is enthroned upon our worship today. And I believe that if we could just allow the Spirit of God to move in our hearts today, that we would just make room for His presence today. That while our hearts will be heavy because we won't be able to see Sister Betty tomorrow. But there, there is a great gift in the morning, Pastor Turner. And I'm looking beyond this day for that day. Let me press on with this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to follow the program as it is printed. If your name is on the program, please do not wait to be called. Simply come up to the microphone to my right and your left. Participate and let's celebrate God. I feel the presence of the Spirit of the Lord in this place. So, Pastor Kevin, come and give the opening prayer, followed by scripture, and again, those on program, so follow in line. Woo, glory to God. For Betty, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, Father, for her family, Lord. And we pray, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as you have blessed your daughter, Father, you will continue to bless her legacy and her family, Father, Lord. You will continue to comfort them, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. You will continue to lift them up, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. You will continue to show your presence, Father, in their life, in the name of Jesus, Father. And we celebrate life this day, Father, Lord. And we thank you because you are the author and the finishes of faith, of life, Father, of our hope, Father, and of our glory. Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Our scripture comes from Psalms 27. Amen. And it reads, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me, to eat up my flesh, my enemies, and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may entrap against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Can y'all say all the days of my life? Amen. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. 
for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. New Testament reading will be from the Gospel of John 14, and it reads as follows. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. As where I am, you will be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen.
I can. I'm not going to keep popping up here. But it's apparent we're going to be here for a minute. And someone said that if you want a short service, just don't know nothing and don't, do, don't, don't, don't know nobody and don't do anything. But this is a life worth celebrating. Hallelujah. And we're going to give God glory. We're going to move through the program. But I don't want us to be in a rush to be about anything other than remembering and celebrating this amazing woman of God. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I may have to step out. In celebration of the life of Sister Betty Ann Gore McLean. Morning sunshine spilled through the white clouds of Brazil's skies, summoning back its daughter. William and Lena's baby, one of seven children, one of five girls. Faint memories linger at the doorstep of the home on 27th Street, all the way to Olive Street, echoing in the minds of those left behind to remember. Remember her laughter, remember her smile. A life's journey from Indiana to the city of roses, Oak Town and back, each destination birthing new lessons, each lesson making her stronger, wiser. She ministered in song from the choir lofts of 25th Street Baptist to Friendship Baptist to Lincoln Avenue Baptist to Metropolitan Baptist, and she beckoned back after Dayton Street's revival, worship with raised hands and lifted voice in gratitude and praise. She taught in school on Sundays, showing little boys and girls how to love Jesus, caring for others with kind words and a gentle smile. Play her life out on a movie screen and you see Betty, phenomenal. Petite in frame, yet impeccable in dress. Like the windows she fastened in department stores. Figurines and puzzles, bingo and bowling. The party was wherever she was. A song for her children to wake up by. A song for them to lie down to rest by. Her prayers were saturated with thanks to God for her children and prayers to cover them. She poured her spirit into her sons and daughters. She worked wherever needed.
to see that they want it for nothing. Daughter, sister, cousin, aunt, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, friend. Now, hidden in his shelter, eternally resting under the shadow of the Almighty, her final song resonates in our hearts as gently as a bow caressing strings in a lullaby. Sleep peaceful in your rest, though for a time our tears will fall and words may not console the void. You know God's hand will cover and heal. His unchanging hand will cover and heal. God bless you.
we sat down and talked family. She talked about you. And we prayed. She prayed for me. I prayed for her. And we prayed together. Because we knew that he heard us. And we knew that this day was coming. She has beat me home. But we know, I know, that when I get there, I'm going to see her again. Amen. I know that. I don't know about you, but I know what God told us. He said, absent from the body and present with the Lord. And then he said, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. And he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. And that where I am, you will be also. So let me go spiritual on you. Let me tell you what happened when Betty went to sleep on this side. She woke up in her mansion on the other side. And at the foot of her bed was her long white robe because it said they're going to be standing around the throne in all white. And she's standing in her white robe right now. But when she got up out the bed and put on her robe, she looked around and you know what that contagious smile she had? You know that smile she got, you know what it meant. She knows she had it. She got up and she looked around her and she just smiled. And she got up, went to the door and walked on those gold streets. And as she walked down the street in that white road on that gold street, she looked up and she said, to God be the glory for all the things that he has done. And I will ever praise him, for he is my Lord and he's my Savior. And she's sitting down now, giving God the praise. She ain't resting now. She ain't resting. Let me tell you, she's walking around heaven all day and giving God all the praise for all he has done. So be sad for a moment, but be glad she's in that new body. No pain. No pain. No worries. And just walking around. Praising God all day long. Hallelujah for the saints. Good morning. Pastor Smith. And to the entire friendship family. But especially to... What you looking at, Freddie? <laughs> Victor, Freddie, Bruce, Diane, and the entire family. I bring condolences from Morning Star Christian Church in Pasadena. Let me say this. These are my first cousins down here on the front row. And Aunt Betty could handle everybody but Freddie. <laughs> he wasn't bad, but she just couldn't handle him. Aunt Betty is my aunt. Like my mother will always be my mother, Aunt Betty will always be my aunt. I use that in the present tense. She became my aunt through marriage to my mother's brother. Now, my mother, I think she had around 15 or 20, 22 brothers and sisters. But the family historian is back there, Con Edith, and she can attest to that. And Aunt Betty was married to, I think, the second youngest of my grandmother's children, Uncle W. And 
let me say this. Now, she was married to my mother's brother. So it gave me a legitimate right to have a crush on her. <laughs> From about the age of 11 to 15, I had a crush on Aunt Betty. Look at that picture. Who wouldn't? And that crush didn't leave until I found my first, grand, uh, my first girlfriend. But she was truly, truly a wonderful aunt. Usually, when a marriage dissolves, the family sort of dis the in-laws, but that wasn't the case with Aunt Betty. Even though that marriage dissolved, everybody on my mother's side still accepted Aunt Betty. She was that kind of a woman. And another thing, you didn't play with Aunt Betty. At least we didn't, because we knew that she had the right from my mother to do whatever she wanted to do to us if we got out of line. But Aunt Betty will truly be missed by the entire McLean Callum Trotter family, because she was more than just an in-law. She was a real sister to us. She was a real blood uh, relative to us, not just an in-law, because she carried herself in that way. And she always made sure that all of her children stayed intertwined with the other side of the family. That's how you know you have a good Christian woman in your midst. Just because the marriage dissolved, it didn't mean that the friendship and the kinship dissolved. So, Freddie, I know you're going to miss your mom. Victor, I know you're going to miss your mom. Bruce, looking just like Uncle O.W., my God. And Diane, I'm going to steal this program. This is outstanding. This is simply outstanding. And I'm glad to see your wife is still with you, Freddie, because I married y'all. <laughs> You know why I mess with Freddie? Because my mom loved her some Freddie. And she loved all of them. But Freddie, boy, she loved her some Freddie. So I just want to say in closing, I love you guys. And you know I'm there for you for anything that you need or you want, except for money. God bless you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> so what happened was, <laughs> you know, on Sunday morning when um, Mama McLean took her rest, um, it was really hard for me to go back to sleep. And I was tossing and turning, and I hadn't heard this song in years. And God just laid it on my spirit. And this is the song that I'm going to share with you because it comforted me, and I'm hoping that it comforts and ministers to you. Now, we're going to do this without music for a minute, but at the end, I want you guys to join in with me because I really want you to get this, the words in your spirit, okay? Take it home with you, okay? I come to
to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the sun close it and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we there none of it has ever known. And this is really the verse that I really like. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing. And the melody that he gave, gave to me within my heart is ringing. Oh, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells This is when you come in. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we say. Bless you. Good afternoon, McLean. For my mother and now for yours. Soon I will be done with the trouble of the world. Trouble. Soon I will be done with the troubles of the world. I'm going to live with my God. I want I will be done. 
troubles of the world, troubles of the world, soon I will be done with the trouble. I will be done with the troubles of the world, troubles of the world, yeah. troubles of this world, soon I will be done. With the troubles of the world, I'm going to live with God. I, 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 I want to see my mother. I want to see my father. My condolences to the family. Hang on. Friendship Baptist Church resolution. Betty Ann McClain. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. Second Timothy Fourth chapter, seventh and eighth verse. The Friendship Baptist, I'm sorry, the Friendship Pasadena Church family extends heartfelt condolences to members of the McLean family. And we encourage you with this admonition, do not lament the passing of Betty as an untimely death because God's clock keeps perfect time. Many of us know the pain of this kind of loss, but we also know the reality and comfort of God's love when we experience a difficult time like this. Psalms 103, verses 1 and 2 tells us to bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Whereas Betty was a committed and faithful member of the Friendship Baptist Church family for many years, demonstrating true Christian character and love in everything she did thus fulfilling the mandate of the Philippians 2-4, to four, which states, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Betty was a faithful and active member in the music ministry of Friendship Pasadena Church, singing in the gospel choir, and she also taught Sunday school. Whereas our Lord Jesus Christ has seen fit to dismiss Betty McLean from the constraints of this early life and to number her among the saints in heaven, undoubtedly seating her among the musicians surrounding the very throne of the Most High God. There so be it, therefore, be it resolved that the Friendship Church family extends to the entire McLean family 
our deep and sincere sympathy in your loss. Please remember that we will be waiting to ren render loving service whenever you call upon us, the whether it be day or night. May God's promise of eternal life embrace and comfort you and give you hope in this time of sorrow. Be it further resolved that we shall treasure the memory of Mrs. Betty McLean and that a copy of the resolution be given to the family and a copy be placed in the minutes of the church. Done by order of Friendship Pastina Church, prayerfully submitted, Loretta Hudson, Assistant Church Clerk, Reverend Lucius W. Smith, Senior Pastor. Hallelujah. How many of you ever, how many of you when those acapella songs were being sung, you could you could hear the you could hear the ancestors calling back to us. Hallelujah. All I heard was the mothers in the church in my day going, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. God truly is blessed. Just before the slide presentation of the treasured memories, I was asked to read something for the family. It says that the song that is accompanying the treasured memory slideshow is very special to the McLean family. It is called Call on Jesus. This is how the song came to be. Victor had written some beautiful music and didn't know what to do with it. So one day he was talking with his mom about it, and she told him that she had written some words for a gospel song. She gave him the words, and as it would be, they fit the music and melody perfectly. Victor and his mom both knew God was at work. He had a few more words, and it was done. The song was written quite a few years ago, and the singers on this song are Michael Miller Sr., Renee Terrell, Christina Johnson, Yolanda Adisu, Victor McLean, and Charmaine Bogans. Please enjoy and be blessed by treasured memories. Call on Jesus.
Cream of wheat is so good to eat. We have it every day. We sing the song. It makes us strong. It makes us sharp. Hooray. It's good for growing children and grown-ups too to eat. For all your family breakfast, you can't beat cream of wheat. Because of who I am, I have the privilege of using my words. <laughs> this is a medley of three different songs that I like. The first one, I seem like going home. I feel like going home. The trials come. I'm grateful for the things that I have done. Yes, he's so grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on. Oh, Because he's I'm gonna finish this song. Yes. Flowing through my heart. Oh, the rich issues of my Last one. 
dedicate this song to the life and memory of this Betty Ann McLean. My condolences to the family. You know, Diane invited me here to see you. This is a song to dedicate back to you. I'll, when I learned that my mother passed, I wanted to call you right away and then I said, well, I'm going to wait and I'll let you know that if you needed me, I would be here because Diane is a fabulous friend and she took so many great photos of me that I think she took some of my best photos as I told you so I'm happy to be here praise God love you love your mom I did get the pleasure of meeting her and you are a reflection of her and your mothers <clears throat> Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. 
don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone. Today's a Sing to you this song. Please take me to the king. Truth is, it's tough to stop playing these games. But we need to work for the people.
to celebrate. I said this at the outset. I, I, and this might sound funny, strange coming from a pastor. I do not like funerals. Don't like them at all. I've been to a few. Because for me, a funeral is for someone who has no hope beyond this life. That that's all or there's some uncertain future and to leave this world just believing that all of the love and living and blessing that someone has poured into you that you can just fold that up dress it up put it in the ground and it just goes away I feel sorry for you my heart breaks for you because the word of God tells us that the body shall return to the dust from which it came. And the spirit shall return to the God that gave it. And so we're all going to find ourselves in the presence of the God that made us. Because God demands a return on his investment. And so we'll have to stand there and tell him what we've done with our lives how we have treated other people, what we did when we heard the opportunity to receive the free gift of his salvation. Because the word says that there is not only one resurrection, there's two. There's a resurrection of the just. And only God can declare you just. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And with all the singing going on, I just hear a verse ringing in my head. Everybody talking about heaven. Ain't going there. But I believe today that I didn't come to a funeral. I came to a celebration of life. And our hearts are heavy. But we haven't lost anything. I said this to the family. I say this all the time. You can't lose something when you know where it is. I know as we get older, we're looking for things that are in our hands and in our pockets and where are my keys and you driving the car and still don't know. But if you don't know today, let me tell you, there's a place called heaven. My sister earlier talked about a place we call our father's house. Many rooms, many mansions. And if it wasn't so, Jesus would have told us, but he did. And he came. And I believe the sister said also, it reminded me, somebody was talking and talked about something like back in the day. For whatever reason, my mind wandered to the generation that remembers what, what was supposed to happen when, when the streetlight came on. <laughs> this generation don't know nothing about the streetlight. But there was an unwritten rule in some neighborhoods, some circumstances, that, that the streetlight came on, that meant you go home. Find your way home. And I just couldn't help but entertaining myself with the fact that for Sister Betty, the light came on. And she knew she had to leave. So we know where she is. She just, she just beat us home. But there is a time for all of us to be there. I want to again thank everybody that had anything to do. I want to acknowledge again the pastors that are in the house. Pastor, Pastor Trotter, my friend, my brother, Pastor Scott. May we will definitely grow stronger and build our fellowship in days to come. Our own Pastor Kevin McDaniels here at Friendship, but the senior statesman that is in the house, and I just believe it would be right or would not, would be wrong for me not, not only to acknowledge um, one of the sage pastors in this city, but someone that has been a mentor and encourager to me and to many people. Pastor William Turner, could you just, just come and just have a, just a brief word that either we can bring you the mic and I know what I'm doing. It's a dangerous thing to put a microphone in the hand of the man of God. But I'm going to risk it and believe that God is going to bless. Receive Pastor Turner, will you, this morning? Is it still morning this afternoon? Pastor Smith and to this wonderful audience today, I sat and listened to some great concert singing. And it blessed my soul. 
I am I am a family member of the McLean's double over <laughs> family member by marriage Bruce and they gave us two wonderful grandchildren. They blessed our hearts, and I am proud of them. Now a great grandchild. The McLeans have been a great name in this city. Have done great work, and therefore a great homegoing celebration warrant all that has happened. And then I'm family in Christ. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. I join with you, Pastor Lucius, in saying I hate funerals. And my only reason for participating is to encourage people everywhere who listens that this is not the end. This is transition. And if you're not prepared for the next place, you only find the devil waiting with open arms for you in hell. But this is the preparation time and the preparation place. Someone who hears the word today should make a decision. Check your status with God. If it's not positive, you need to be ready. God bless you, Pastor. Love you, love you. I'm, I am I am truly grateful for the people that have poured in into my life and my ministry. And Pastor Turner again is one of the, the men of God that have done that. But even as I stand here right now, looking at you know. These faces, Freddie, I'm not going to pick on you like, you like your boy over there. But, you know, it, it is, it's not awkward, but I just find it strange to be standing here over a woman who knew me before I knew myself. You know, here in this house, we all kind of grew up together, the McLeans and Gore. And so many of us, we've gone on our different ways, but God has a way of just bringing us back. And so to stand here and, 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 and to be put in to actually be entrusted with the position of, of trust that not only the family has in me, but the fact that Sister Betty allowed me to be her pastor. I say that often because, you know, I, I, I never want to take it for granted that really to be an effective pastor in my unlearned opinion is people have to allow you to pastor them because when you don't pastor them then you are simply a spiritual advisor they take what they want and leave what they don't but to allow somebody to speak authoritatively into your life what thus saith the Lord flawed and, and failing as we can be is a is a not just an opportunity it's a privilege and I thank God that that privilege was afforded me just to be a part of Sister Betty's life during the, the brief moments that we did spend together. And so I was contemplating, you know, what, what, what chapter, what verse, what kind of speaks to this moment. And, you know, this is kind of maybe a pastoral secret, but I'm sure all of us have our go-to sermons. You know, there's, there's a lot of amen from the amen corner. I'm uh, I don't feel quite as bad right now, but 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 you know there there are the 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 scripture is filled with with words of encouragement and 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 you know with with things that that we we resort to in times of grief, and I think that that really does the word of God a disservice that 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 too often it is in these places that we turn to God. And God has been there all the time. Thank God that we serve a God we can turn to in times of trouble. Thank God that God doesn't treat us like we treat him. Because you know how it is when, when, when you don't see them certain people till they need something from you. I know nobody that you know, but there's some folks that I've run into over my lifetime 
that, you know, they don't really need you till they need you. And sometimes the flesh can rise up and say, well, why are you calling on me now? Aren't you glad that God don't treat us like we treat him? And so I was thinking about, you know, what, what, what word? I went to John chapter 14 in mind, and, and that got preached, and, and, you know, and Psalm 23, and that got preached. And, and, and I was thinking about the various things, and it just kind of settled in my spirit, really just this morning, that, that and it's true for everybody, but I want to speak specifically to Sister Betty, that, 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 that there's not just one thing that speaks to her life because of the many stages in her life. And that's the word that just popped up in my mind that if I had to give this even a title, you know, it, it would be stages because all of us are at different stages in our life. We've been through different stages from the time you were born to the time you went to school to the time, you know, you got married or the t your first crush or any number of things, your first car, first time you got drunk, first time you went to jail or whatever it is. Come on, it could, come on, uh, you know, the realities of our life is that we haven't always done things right. We haven't always made the right choices, but if behind the scenes, God has always been there for us. And so I was thinking about, again, the 23rd Psalm. I love the 23rd Psalm just because, for me, it's not just something that should be resorted to in a time of grief, but it actually is a road map. Ultimately, you get to the place where you end up in the house of, of the Lord. But David is talking from his life experiences. He's learned how to trust in a God as a shepherd. And then I started just thinking about it, that, that Psalm 23, uh, uh, again, is just a portion of David's life. And so I just went back, and, and, and I've heard this done, and, and, and this kind of is, is, is a first uh, venture into this type of thinking. But I, I just carved out just a couple psalms that I believe speak to the stages of David's life that perhaps reflect the stages of our life. That before you get to Psalm 23, that, that if we just go back to Psalm 21, there was a time where David is, 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 is in on top of the world mode. I was talking with Pastor uh, Trotter earlier that I have this, this thing I say to people. I ask them, how are you doing? And they say, I can't complain. And I say, well, is it that you can't or you won't? Because if you just can't complain, I mean, then, you, then I need to hang out with you a little more often. Because for me, there's always something to complain about. I, I mean, turn on the news. There's something to complain about. Open your door. Walk out in the world. Talk to your neighbors. There's something to complain about. But, but, but there was a time where it seemed like everything was going amazing in David's life. And again, I don't want to be the downturn in this service. You know, I heard from Pastor Stevens a long time ago. that, And Pastor Stevens is one of the senior pastors who has gone on to glory. And, and, and he said, son, there's three things you need to Remember, and I think it's three. He said, stand up to be seen, speak up to be heard, sit down to be appreciated. So I want y'all to see me. I want you to hear me. But I want you to appreciate me. So Psalm 21, I'm just going to read it real fast and, and, and see if you can't feel where David was in his life. Psalm 21, reading from the New International Version, it says, says this. And this for me is a, is a stage in David's life of celebration. Where he says, oh Lord, the king rejoices in your strength. David is a king. He wasn't always a king, but at this place, God has elevated him to a place of kingship. God took David from zero to a hero, to, to a shepherd that his own father didn't think enough of him to invite him into the house when the rest of the brothers were going to be considered for being the king. And I know, you know, I don't want to dog out his, his, his daddy, but, 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 but I would think that if I got overlooked, I might have a grudge. But David is at this place where through it all, he's now at this place of kingship. He's sitting on top. God has blessed him. God is good. And he said, oh, Lord, the king rejoices in your strength. How great is his joy in the victories that you give. You have granted him the desire of, of his heart and have not withheld the request of his lips. You welcomed him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him eternal blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king's trust in the Lord through your unfailing love of the most high God. 
He will not be shaken. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your light, your right hand will seize your foes. At the time of your appearing, you will make them like a fiery furnace. In his wrath, the Lord will swallow them up. In his fire, the Lord will consume them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their, prosper, their posterity for mankind. Though they plot evil against you and divide wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. For you will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your might. Have you ever had a good day? I mean a good day. That in spite of what's going on, you just felt like you could conquer the world. That, you know, your bills got paid and your kids were acting right and, you know, your, 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 your spouse acted at least like, like they loved you and, 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 you know, the dog wasn't digging up the yard and the mail came on time and everything was Has anybody been in that place where you can celebrate? That's a stage. And if not, and maybe I'm in the wrong place because y'all look very glum right about now. But I just wonder if there is a time where you, a stage in your life when you could celebrate God's goodness. When one day, if it was a moment, if it was just, a, just an instant, and I think that we need to learn how to celebrate those moments, celebrate those victories. Don't always, you know, look for the bad time. I always love talking about how the Bible says that Peter believed Jesus enough that he got out of the boat and Peter walked on water. Now, if you say that to a lot of Christian folks, the first word out of their mouth is, yeah, but. Can we celebrate the fact that God brings victory every now and then? Can we celebrate the fact that sometimes there does, that, that you may have had the darkest night, but there is a joy that comes in the morning. I believe David was at this place where he was on top of his game. Nobody could beat David at being David. David was a giant slayer, man. David was, an, David, David was a super slayer. They even made a song out for David. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. And so David knew what it'd be to be on top. And so he writes this place from a stage of celebration. But then something happens. Psalm 22. My God! My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Have you ever had things go bad in your life? From being on top of the world to now seeming like the world is on top of you. So I want to encourage those of you that may be in that place of lamentation. You are celebrating. You are thanking God. You are giving him all the glory because of the interaction you were able to have, not only with Sister Betty, but in those beautiful, wonderful times. See, in my mind, when I stand here on a Sunday morning, I'm going to miss Sister Betty sitting back there. Now, we're not the kind of church that claims pews, my seat and your seat and why you in my way. But I know that in general, Sister Betty would be somewhere back in that place with that smile on her face, ready to worship God, but even though she wasn't able to be as mobile as she was, she gave God glory. And then the day came where I got the call and I rushed to the hospital. And before I ended up in the ER, I heard Diane's mourning and lamenting. And I knew that something terrible had happened and her mom had transitioned from the earth. There's nothing worse than someone you love leaving you while you watch. And in those moments, you start thinking about, well, what about all my prayers? What about the fact that no weapon formed against me shall prosper? And do you know that people take that the wrong way? It says that they won't prosper. It didn't say it wouldn't hurt. It didn't say it wouldn't affect you. So David is now in this place of having gone from celebration, a stage of celebration, to now a stage of lamentation. Now lamenting the fact that it seems as though God has turned his back on him. How could it be that this loving and compassionate and, and gracious God that, 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 that folks tell me will never leave me nor forsake me, how can it be that I feel as though I'm all by myself? I know I've got friends. I know I've got family, but I feel like nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Have you ever felt like nobody can relate to the grief in your heart? But the Bible tells us that we should not feel as though we're going through anything different or strange. 
For the same things have happened to our brothers and sisters all around the world. There's somebody around you whose mom passed. There's somebody around you whose loved one didn't come out of the hospital. There's somebody around you that is struggling right now. With all the testimonies of the miracles that God has done, there's still somebody in the battle. Still somebody dealing with that heart problem. Still somebody that today might be their last day that they take their last breath. And you've been praying. You've been crying out to God, but we don't know what time God has set for us. Because if it was up to us, nobody would die. Grandma would be 275 years old. Because we don't want to part. But the reality of this life is that we will all pass this way. We'll all feel like we've been forsaken. So in that stage of your life, can I tell you, just hold on a little longer because I think it was out of that place that David wrote the 23rd Psalm. See, because when you go from a time of celebration, even though you go then to a time of lamentation, I believe that we need to walk through a time of navigation. See, Psalm 23 is that navigation. Anybody got a GPS? Anybody got a GPS in your car? And, 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 and can I ask you, has your GPS told you that you've arrived at a destination and you look out your window and still don't know where you are? You have arrived. Man, I'm in an alley. What you talking about? Because everything else will fail you. Because there is a way that seems right. But the end thereof is always death. And so David writes the 23rd Psalm, I believe, from that place of realizing I can't do this thing by myself. And before I start complaining about things I've gone through, let me tell you that the Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd needs a shepherd. David knew what it meant not only to lead sheep, David was leading a people. If you're leading your family, if you're leading your business, you need to know that God has given you a GPS system. That before you run into a wall, that before you drive your life off a cliff, that before you end up in this place, and all of us will because it is given unto everybody wants to die. But after that, the judgment that you need to have the GPS of the 23rd Psalm. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, God is leading me and I shall never be in a place of perpetual want. Let me tell you how good my God is. He makes me, even though I don't want to from time to time, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, but every now and then, even though I've got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though my GPS didn't drop me off in the hood, and I ain't got but a little bit of gas and one tail light. Come on, somebody. I don't need to fear any evil. Because I'm not worried about State Farm, man. I've got insurance in God. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely in goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. What of my... You ain't dead yet. All the days of my life. And one day I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, for believers, I know where the end of my road takes me because I've set my course to trust in a God who said he would never leave me even though I go through some things even though I've had those times where I've doubted God and I've doubted myself and I've been in lamentation Lord why does it seem like I've been forsaken but I realize that God is just up to something somebody said when when you're down to nothing God is up to something and so we go through that 23rd Psalm the 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 navigation. And this thing just dropped in my spirit because sometimes if you've been through something, you need to know that God has not brought you this far to leave you. I heard in my spirit this morning a song from my past. And forgive me all you singers, I'm just going to try to do my best in this moment. But I heard a soul from back when I was a little one singing a song say, I don't feel no ways tired. That's Deacon Gore from back in the day. When I was little, come too far from where I started from. I don't know if somebody told you this, but they told me. Nobody told me the road. Oh, y'all know that song? Come on, sing it. Oh, I. What'd he do? He brought me. 
y'all, I want y'all to appreciate me. So what I'm saying is God has not brought you this yes. far. Yes. Yes. He hasn't brought you to this moment and confronted you with this grief to leave you. He's not leaving you at the side of the road. He's not leaving you at a graveside in one of these places. God is going to navigate you through even this. Because in Psalm 24, David gets, gets, gets to a place where he says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I want to say to Victor, I want to say to Fred, I want to say to Bruce, I want to say to Diane, I want to say to Juanita, I want to say to Brother Gore, I want to say to your whole family, lift up your heads. Yes. And the king yes. of glory shall come in. I know it's hard. I know Satan has got you with your heart bowed and you just feel like, what are you talking about, Pastor? I, I'm going to tell you because Pastor Trotter alluded to this, uh, that this was not his aunt. She still is. Because I'm going to tell you something that you may never heard before. Betty McLean, she ain't dead. All right, Pastor. All right, Pastor. What are you talking about, man? She's right. No, 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 no. Now we know if the earthly tent we dwell in be dissolved, that we have a building, a house eternal in the heavens, not made by human hands. This is not Betty McLean. This is an old house like the one on Orange Grove where y'all used to live. She had to move out. She had to move up. Because there was a greater place. I feel like preaching, Pastor. I feel the anointing coming on. But, 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 but I want y'all to appreciate me, so let me just shrink this thing down. Be lifted up, ye ancient doors, and the king of glory. Lift up your heads. Lift up your hearts. Don't let fear. Don't let doubt. Don't let your mourning get in the way. Because God still wants to enter. And in case you don't know, David asked the question, who is this king of glory? The Lord. Strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye ancient doors, and the king of glory shall come in. That is exaltation. We need to learn how to exalt and praise God even in spite of what we're going through. Then in verse 25, it, uh, I mean in Psalm 25, then, then David says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. That's supplication. That means that we need to keep on praying. Don't stop praying just because your prayers for Betty didn't seem like they got answered. Oh, God answered them. You wanted her to get better. She is better. You wanted her to be free from pain. She is free from pain. I know you wanted her to hang around, but God couldn't leave her in this contaminated system and make her better. You can't stay in mess and expect to get better. Come on, Pastor. God wants to take you out. That's why the Bible says that if any man, woman, be in Christ, we are new creatures. All things have passed away. I'm still the same guy. But there's a new thing in me. And there comes a time where that new thing cannot be contained in that old you. And God has to translate you out of that place. But we got to keep on praying. We need to stay in a place of supplication. Then chapter 26, I'm wrapping to a quick close. Then there's vindication. Psalm 26, verse 1, David said, vindicate me. Oh, Lord, for I have lived a blameless life. I've trusted in you without wavering. None of us are perfect. I got four amens. Just let me say that again. None of us are perfect. If you're married, ask your spouse. If you're a parent, ask your child. None of us. But David said, vindicate me. Because I'm trying to do my best. I know I've got faults and failures, but Lord, I've tried yes, to live Lord, a blameless Lord. life. Yeah. I've tried my best to be, and I believe that Sister Betty would say that very thing, but then comes the declaration, and with this I'm closed. Because David says in Psalm 27, and here's a place where when all is said and done, when you've been backed into a corner, you've been run over by life, Fears and doubts and death and the reality of this life have just got you to a, to a place. I believe that David remembered not only who he was, but who his God was. And so in spite of what I've been through, I believe David just squared his shoulder, dusted off his clothes, and said, let me tell you something. The yeah. Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, even the toughest of the tough came against me to eat up my, my, my flesh. Guess what, my brother? They stumbled and fell. Though a whole should encamp against me, though the whole gang is lined up against me, my heart shall not fear. If a cotton-picking war should break out on me, even then will I be confident. Why? Because I just keep it simple. Because one thing, one simple thing have I desired from the Lord this is what I'm going to seek after. Yes. And I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Yes. Still ain't dead yet. Yes. All the days yes. of my life. Yes. To behold yes. the beauty of the Lord. Yes. And to inquire in his temple. Yes, stages. Yes. God moves us through stages. Yes. From times of great celebration. Deep lamentation. I haven't had, had enough time to marinate on this message, so I can't remember all them other points. <laughs> but I know I can reach a place of declaration. In spite of everything I've been through, do I stand in the shadow of death? Death is just a shadow for a believer, and that shadow will pass over all of us. See, but I don't need to fear it because I know who has already defeated the Lord who has defeated death and has risen from the dead gives me the testimony. Oh, death! Where's your sting? Grave? Where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. If you don't know him you should check your connection. Don't leave this place today having maybe felt better without knowing where you're going when this day comes to you. No matter how young, no matter how old, no matter how rich, no matter how, how poor. I think somewhere in the Bible, it, it, it says that death is the great equalizer. That the richest of the rich and the poorest of the poor are presented before pastor, priest, somebody to speak last rites or comforting words. And hopefully they don't have to lie about you. Y'all know my sense of humor. I got to put this in here. You went to Uncle Johnny's funeral. If you got an Uncle Johnny, please don't take this personal and misuse his name. And the pastor say, Uncle Johnny's in a better place. And somebody said, have you met Johnny? <laughs> Johnny ain't looking down. <laughs> Johnny looking up. Oh, I love you. And I'll see you in the morning. Where are you? What stage of life are you in? None of us know how close we are to that transition. The Bible says something in Acts chapter 13. I think it's verse 36. But all the things it says about David. It says that David served God. This is a paraphrase. David served God in his generation and fell asleep. I mean, what, what, what greater testimony can a person have that in the generation that God grants us that we served God in it raised a family poured into other people lived a life in such integrity and beauty and charm and grace that others were affected and blessed by it and when that season and that time came you just fall asleep and transition out of this life. Our dear sister is not dead. She just sleeps. Jesus came to take her from this place and he's going to come for us. Be ready. Please be ready. Don't let these words of, hopefully you felt a little something, some minute, but don't let this just be a seed that falls on a hard heart. 
or you're so pre preoccupied that it doesn't, let it find that place in you. Where will you spend eternity? Because everything that you've done, your smiles, your love, that just doesn't just disappear into the atmosphere. God has taken record and we have to give an account for those things. So may the Lord bless you today. and May God keep us as we continue this life in the absence of our dear sister, but to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Can you bless the Lord now? We're going to receive our instructions now from the Valentine family again to this, my family, my extended family. We've come a long way, man. We've, we've, we've kind of watched each other grow. Time and distance has taken us all in different directions, but in the love of God, there is no distance. You might be on the other side of the country. You might be right up the road, still in the boondocks, but close enough we can get to you. But that love, man, is what binds us. And so it's not just times like these. It's, it's, it, it's all the time. Mr. Gore, you have no idea how much I love you, sir, and how much you mean to me. Because in your face, I see that generation, my father's generation, who went through so much, dealt with so much, so that we could have these things that far too many of us take for granted. I never want to forget that in you, and I love you, and that entire generation that took time to pour back. Let's pour back, folks. There's some lost kids out there. There's a generation that just has become so detached and so cynical. Don't even look at you when they walk by anymore. Don't say hello. Out there just running amok. And it's not just the devil doing it. It's the failure of the family. And God's all about family. That's why we can call him father. I feel my appreciation level dropping rapidly. So let me turn this over to the Valentines. And let's move forward. God bless you. Family, God's people, can we stand for the recessional love, the family? The interment is at Rose Hills Gate 10. Then we will return to the New Revelation Church family for the repast. So if you would make your way to your cars, if you're coming, or we'll just meet you at New Rev. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be 